Buzz Burbank in the Mike O'Mara Show newsroom. Uh, Rob, Oscar, you remember when Donald Trump said that he would give $5 million to charity if the president could produce a birth certificate that he could believe yes. in? Yes. Yeah, he was, well, a, he was one of the birthers. Well, yeah. Then Bill Maher went on The Tonight Show and he said he'd give $5 million to charity if Trump could prove that he was not uh, fathered by an orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, and so uh, Trump produced his birth certificate and Maher, of course, was joking and never gave the money to charity. Right. Yes. So now Donald Trump Trump is suing Bill Maher for the five million dollars. What? And yeah. this is our breaking news right now. Yeah, that's the is big that story. Why we heard just, just off the Fox News wire. As a matter of fact. Is that your news sounder again, telephone. or is no, that a that's telephone? That's not my phone. That okay. must be your phone. Oh, I'm going to answer it right now. Hello. Hello, Rob. Donald Trump. It's Donald Trump. How are you, Mr. Trump? I'm good. I'm successful. <laughs> I'm doing well. You know, this of is a very are. tough time because. You know the president is lying. Do you want to write, do you want to go right into that? Because I wanted to make a little small talk with you first. If that's I'd okay. love to do small talk with you, Rob. All right. I'm a big the... uh, supporter yeah. of the Mike O'Mara show, even though you're not as successful as you could be. But someday we hope to be big. Someday, somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> right. Continue chasing your pot of gold, boys. All right. Now, Thank you, Donald. How about I'm the... Donald Trump? How... Can you tell me about the weather? The weather, <laughs> the weather outside this is, is this frightful. This is small talk. <laughs> oh, oh, I, yeah, up in here in New York, it's uh, flurries and overcast. Small talk with Donald Trump. Sorry. But I'm here, Rob. How are you? I'm good. You've been in the news. I hope you're doing well. I am doing very well, but I'm also joined by Oscar and Buzz, and of course, Mark Hi, is Mr. here. Hi, Mr. Trump. Hello, Oscar. We're all here. Hello, Rob. <laughs> hello, Buzz. Hello, Donald. And Mark. Uh, hello, Mark. Yes. Hi, Donald. How are you all? We're, We're good. Very well. Yeah, so, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm suing. Yeah, that you because, love Because, you know, the, you've got a president who doesn't uh, live up to his agreements. Well, this isn't about yeah, the president. Why this you, is you're suing Bill Maher. Yeah, why well, I'm suing Bill Maher because he also doesn't live up to his agreements also. I see. Are you, and, you know, you've got the president taking fake pictures with a gun. You've got Bill uh, Maher making bets fake, that he cannot it's not, pay. It's not a fake picture. It's a I am not picture. related to an orangutan. <laughs> and if you're going to say that and say, I'll put $5 million into your favorite charity, you, and that's not good have you ever or, used or successful. The, have you ever used the phrase... Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Well, that's not relevant. Well, you, maybe it is. That's you, not relevant. What's you, relevant? What? You do have the wispy orange hair. So. I, I am not related, <laughs> of course. <laughs> if you're going to go on national television uh -huh. right. and you're going to say, if I will give five million dollars how many to five million dollars a lot of money to a charity uh -huh. a what? of to a charity <laughs> of donald trump's choice uh -huh. right if he can provide evidence that he rob yes. is not related to an orangutan i am sitting here telling you i have sent my evidence uh -huh. to bill maher and i have proven that i by birth certificate which shows my parents. You're who? My parents. What are their names again? I don't remember. Don't, don't ask me dad. questions. <laughs> Mom and dad. It's on the birth certificate. Jesus. <laughs> you think you got stopped by the cops. <laughs> now, you know, you know, of course, that Bill Maher was just joking. He was, was on the Tonight a Show no, making no, a joke. No, he, what he did, when I challenged the president, uh -huh. I was serious. Yes, And when were. Bill Maher challenged me, I was serious. Y you and were. Bill Maher, yeah, you were Bill serious. Bill Maher's a joke. But his, but his comments weren't a joke. Uh -huh. He's a joke because he'd love to be as successful as I am. Are you serious right now? I'm very serious. Mr. Trump, did yes. you pay the $5 million to the charity of your choice? He never provided, the, he never provided to me the documentation. So therefore, I'm not obligated legally, from a legal standpoint, to be... Do the good thing. Good. Do you like charity? Good. What? Do you like charity? I love charity. Charity is important. We have to give uh -huh. back. We have to give back, and I've spent a lifetime supporting various charities what, from some of the Miss America. Companies. What about letting bygones? Miss, Miss USA, sorry. That's, you get it right. What sorry. about letting bygones be bygones, just uh, writing it off as a joke? I don't think it's, mm -hmm. I think it's important to mm -hmm. let people know mm -hmm. if they're going to go on a successful <laughs> television program right. and they're going to do that, they have to pay the piper. I mean, what, didn't his parents teach him anything his what his parents it sounds like you've got an axe to grind with bill maher can you i'm you, not sure what you mean by that okay you have a problem with bill maher a personal problem oh a problem right i do have a problem because he's telling you're acting, lies. you're acting he's telling lies because he's not successful and he's not smart and he's not good looking and but if maybe if he was a better looking man he'd be less uh, sensitive but why are you being so litigious pardon me 
Now, Why are you being so litigious? I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure what the, that means, but I will say this, that I think that oh, Bill Maher... Uh, no, yes. you're just being litigious. You're taking him to court for no good reason. Oh, taking him to court. Right, yes. you're being right. litigious. You're litigating. Court because he, he made a claim that was false, and if he and if he's going to make that claim, then I'll do the... Li- L- litigious. What do you feel? How do you feel about? Means. How do you feel about false claims? False claims. <laughs> I think they're uh, they're obnoxious. Whoa! How what? about that one? What? Huh? What? Why engage? I found that one. What's that one mean? Quite. What I'll tell it? you later. All right. Yes. Why, good. why engage in these monkey shines? Monkey shines. <laughs> yes. There's monkey now, business. I, I, look, I think we could do a good interview, uh-huh. and we could do a successful interview and a big uh-huh. interview that right. would probably elevate your status <laughs> right. in the radio and podcasting world <laughs> if you guys would maybe try to speak a little more English. All right, then, we'll then let's do that. For example, I'm really ashamed that Mike is not here right now to talk to you because he's excellent at aping Well, people. he's one of the left-wingers, you know, that, that makes his big statements, but he doesn't back it up. If he backed it up with his stomach, Maybe that would be wow. something. Hey, Maybe know, he'd have so he'd have a point there. Do you know what Andy? Because Mike's really obnoxious and he, not successful. What does it obnoxious reminds me of Rosie? What does obnoxious mean? Huh? What does obnoxious mean? Bad. Bad. Well, more specifically. Oh, more specifically yourself. <laughs> you're, you're interviewing. You're interviewing me. Yeah. Well, the problem with Mike. Do you know what Andy Parks calls Mike? Andy Parks is a great American. <laughs> Why? Because he knows what's right. He's always, in my opinion, on the right side of issues. Right? Like what? He's a, well, the gun issue, right. the politics issue, the success issue. Yes. All the issues. Mr. Tr- <laughs> Mr. Trump, uh, yes. a scientist, maybe you've read about this, scientists have made remarkable progress uh, working with apes and orangutans by giving them uh, uh, iPads to work with. And, really? and, and and the monkeys seem to really enjoy this and seem to, to learn and be able to communicate. I do love you, the technology you, of the iPad, and I'm all for scientists. Do, do you own an iPad? Yes, I do. Yeah. I've got all sorts of computer technology, mm-hmm. and I think that the more work that science can do, the better it is for mankind as a whole, You know, so they don't have to be litigious. <laughs> and what does that mean again? I don't know. <laughs> it's the Mike O'Mara Show. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at www.mikeomarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's The <laughs> Mike O'Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. We played street football right there on the street. And uh, this is where we had the greatest quarterback in the world. Our quarterback, he had to control 23 men on a side. And he was really great at it. You women don't know anything about it. You played with dolls and stuff like that. But here's a guy with an ingenious mind. He'd call a football play like this. He'd always get down on one knee and draw things. You know, he'd take a Coke bottle top. Now listen to this now. Uh, Arnie, go down uh, 10 steps and cut left behind the black Chevy. (laughs) Philbert, you run down to my house and wait in the living room. Cosby, you go down to 3rd Street, catch the J bus. Have him open the doors at 19th Street. I'll fake it to you. George, I'm one fat kid. They never thought, what about me? You go long. A lot of good plays going like that. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Buzz Burbank, Rob Speedway, Oscar Santana. And now, from what used to be Buzz Burbank's easy chair, but now it's Mike's because of his surgery, here's Mike. Live from the Cappy Fiber Studios, this is the Mike O'Mara Show. We're downloaded worldwide 17 million times. And we are powered by Encore Insurance. We're at MikeOmeraShow.com, 102.9 FM. WTNT in Washington, D.C., and the mighty 1630 KC Hey Hey in Iowa. I like that. KC Hey Hey. I'm going to steal that. Hey, yeah. KC Hey Hey. KC Hey Hey. Ho ho. Uh, today is Tuesday, February 5th, 2013, and we are brought to you today by Pro Flowers. You know it's the only flower service we use on this show. Mm. She'll be impressed when you turn to Pro Flowers for Valentine's Day, and her friends will be impressed, and that will impress her even more. That's a hell of a lot of impressing. Sure it is. 100 Blooms of Love. This is a great deal. The only deal that I've seen of its kind that's out there that's this good with this many flowers. It's impressive. 100 Blooms of Love and a free glass vase for just $19.99 from our friends at Pro Flowers. 100 Blooms is a lot of flowers and a lot of colors. 
and it's now 50% off at proflowers.com. And for another 10 bucks, two more things you'll love, a spa kit. Oh! Mm-hmm. Who doesn't want a spa kit? And gourmet chocolates. That's right. Use the code TMOS to get these great gifts at 800 Pro Flowers or when you click the microphone at proflowers.com. Do it while there's still time. You won't beat the price. All of us on the show use them all year round. And proflowers.com is ranked number one by J.D. Powers and Customer Satisfaction. For online flowers, don't go anywhere else. We love Pro Flowers. They're the best. And uh, really, make sure you put that code TMOS up there. The last because time when I you saw use them, that's very helpful for us. The last time I saw 100 Blooms, I was at Temple with Mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're on the front row. <laughs> Got good tickets. <laughs> Go to proflowers.com. Use the code TMOS on the program today. Uh, get ready for copycats in advertising for next year's Super Bowl. Oh, and yeah, probably yes. for any major uh, sporting event. And a very, 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 very sad trend in advertising mm. that I think is going to ruin the major events mm. and anybody who liked fun commercials that oh, we all like to watch. I'll great, tell you about great. that. Uh, Rob Spiewax Legal Corner today. Thank you so much. Rob, uh, I was going to have Rob Spiewax Parenting Corner dun, today, but it's Rob dun, Spiewax dun. Legal dun. Corner. Yes. Uh, the child is recovered and nobody reports anymore. I am. I, they I, don't care. I love to talk about the, the, the absolute disintegration of journalism. There is none. It doesn't exist anymore. Nobody at that scene... And they had every major news organization at that scene, mm-hmm. and nobody's reporting. We'll talk about no. that a little bit. Uh, we were so successful that uh, we've got a major announcement uh, from our appearance at Jimmy's. It was so successful, a major announcement cool. today. Oh. Uh, less than a month from a spring break to thir- 2013. Got to talk about that. And uh, Juicing Day, uh, hmm. the ultimate underreported missed call at the Super Bowl, and two men, two prominent men who uh, made me cry. Wow. Along oh, with wow. Mark Ronick and the Recovered Tapes. Oh, now, yeah. Uh, Mark Ronick, we'll start with you. Okay. On Friday's show, uh, and really, that's the best day of the week to have this happen. Oh, yes. Uh, after three yeah, years. It was a great day. After yeah. three years of, you know, an occasional glitch, but really, by and large, mm-hmm. technically, this operation runs flawlessly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we uh, pride ourselves on our audio and on our sound. We work hard to make this show sound good. What? And believe it or not, <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> and believe it or not, there are shows that don't know about it and don't give a rat's That's ass about true. it. We we started this podcast. Are you listening, NPR? <laughs> <laughs> we started this podcast and uh, we all, to a man, said, let's try to make this sound better than the radio sounds. Yes, and, and we make did. the microphone sound right. And we're happy about that. It was amazing that we were able to sound even better than WJFK. It, absolutely. <laughs> wow. And, and so now that we're on the radio again on WTNT, 102.9 FM here in Washington, and also KCJJ out in Iowa, we like to make sure that uh, we don't have any technical glitches. Yes. So on Friday's show, uh, we did have a technical glitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Couple we of had them. more than one. Number one... Uh, the little card, uh, it's a little disc that we record onto. I won't get you bogged down with the technical difficulties with this. You can look on Ustream right now. It's called an SD card. It's a little SD card. That's one of the sources, not the only one we use. Because you're going to go, an SD is good. That's kind of lightweight. One of several backups. So all the the backups weren't all utilized. Mm -hmm. So when the SD card S the bed, we were S out of luck. And uh, so Mark ran out into the community trying to search for engineers, computer people that could recover this uh and they said they can recover part of it but not all of it and so we didn't have a show yeah everybody uh, should know that uh, i put in calls to both uh, uh rob was already here right you were here right so, yeah. i don't know rob, rob and i were here with you rob, i was rob and mark i were was here. trying to get an invitation for dinner so i was oscar, hanging around oscar and buzz had uh, had Left. headed out of town yeah. together. And in Buzz's case, Buzz was probably almost home, maybe right. in his driveway. I was home. And yeah. uh, Oscar was halfway home, and uh, we called them both back and said, "We got to do another show. Uh, the show was lost, and it was a great show. Fun. It really fun. was yeah. a damn great near show. perfect. The one yeah. that it was, was lost fun, was unbelievable. There were lots yeah. of moving parts. There mm-hmm. were lots of elements to it, and uh, we enjoyed every second of it. Mm-hmm. So I was. Really relieved. We were sad. I, I was out of my mind. We were sad. We were pissed. so pissed. Yeah, because it's just you know, uh, especially on that day with what we had. You know, there was a lot to talk about. A lot to promote. Super it was right Bowl before weekend. the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Sure, and the Cassidy shirts that we released. Yep, right. the Jack Cassidy yep. shirts, and I was just you know, besides myself, beside myself. And then uh, we did another show, and that show was fine. It was did not like the it, first show. Did you fine. find it surreal to go through the same topics again? 
like just a couple hours later? Uh, well, you know, I didn't do that exactly. But we, we did we, follow. The, we had a skeleton. Of we had a skeleton yeah. of the same show. Yeah, it was just. Right. I felt it was so weird. But the thing that was odd about it is that once we got going, we were all pissed because yeah. you know you, you it's mm-hmm. like. You know, you you make your donuts for the day, yeah, right. and they're all put in the display case, and then uh, the cat comes in and pees on the donuts. You <laughs> yeah. know, it's just you don't have any donuts left, and you got to make the donuts from scratch all again, over again, and Same you know, donuts. and they're not going to taste as good. So we're very very. Uh, I blame the cat pee. But once we got doing the show on Friday, we had a great time sure. and sure. forgot about it because that's the way this show works. Anything that's going on around our world or anything like that, once those microphones are turned on, it's usually a lot of fun. Show sure. and, we, and we hang out, mm-hmm. and we uh, we did. So we flew through that. But over the weekend, uh, Mark stood on it all weekend. Yeah. Sure. And he went nuts about it. He hated it. And he actually uh, tried to recover the show. And so I audio wanted to get Audio restoration, yeah. So yeah. have you been – where are you with your audio restoration? <laughs> because we can, if we can get it – we're going to make it available to you, just to you know, not not for money. No, no. God, Rob, no not for money. Rob, believe Waltz it or not, no I just money. had an itch. No, just for, an itch uh, for money. Yeah, it was you Mark's idea. You are the Uber whore. It was Mark's I idea. No, it was not. That we're gonna, you are the Uber whore. <laughs> it is not going to be. It'll be free, and, That's and we'll, right. we'll call it the lost tapes. Where yes. are you with the lost tapes? So basically, what I've done is I've taken the video that we did capture. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, the audio was pretty bad from that UStream video. Mm-hmm. However, I have uh, been playing with it all weekend and made it also the audio it now basically sounds like uh we were broadcasting from an am signal yeah can we hear it yeah we as a matter of fact we have a clip a sample Uh, are you done and ready to put this up and Uh, i can be done by this evening uh let's let's put it up uh, by the end of the week okay let's put it so you know tweak it get it right because and what we'll what we'll do is every day Right. We will uh, we'll have different clips. Oh, that's love, a great idea. I love when tease. things happen organically because right. it's kind of a you know it's kind of a different sound, but mm-hmm. it's you know it's the same sound that that we yes. that, that we know and love. You know, it's our voices, but mm-hmm. it sounds like AM radio or whatever. Yeah, well, it sounds it, just like an AM. Here's signal. a clip. Yeah, to, to How hear... hard did you work on the audio restoration itself? I mean, it's great that you captured, it, but did you clean it up? I, I definitely cleaned it All up. Right, so we this will have sound a, pretty good. So Friday, look forward to uh, the regular show, mm-hmm. a bonus show, yes. and uh, the, the lost, lost tape show. Cool. Yeah. Right. You're going to have three shows to enjoy all weekend Happy long. Weekend. Let's hear a clip from uh, the, the Lost this Tape. This is from last Friday. President, Mr. Speaker, what? No. members of the Senate, it's good, right? of the House of Representatives, <laughs> yesterday, uh-huh. what? December 7th. Wait a minute. This is our show? 1941. That's Franklin Roosevelt, Rob. That's not the correct tape. Mark, I think you pulled the wrong tape. That's not the lost tape. You've been restoring the wrong stuff. Stop. That That can't be right. No, that is... That is very wrong. What? And what is this about Pearl Harbor? Why does the people tell me these things? <laughs> that is terrible. Is the quality... The Arizona has been sunk? <laughs> what? <laughs> is the quality better or worse than that? Tape? It's about like that. Yeah. Maybe a little better. Uh, yeah. well, but instead of being 80 years old, it's seven days old. So as you're working on it, <laughs> Mark, uh, please, every day... 70, sorry. Yeah. Every day, make sure you provide Rob yes. with a okay. clip from the show. We'll have more clips tomorrow. Okay, yes, we sure. Will. Yeah. And Maybe then, even those clips from be. earlier in the show. <laughs> <laughs> We're just a bunch of wags. <laughs> I swear to God. Rob know. Spiewak headlines. Yeah. Oh, yes. God. Legal corner. Not so great. Rob Spiewak got busted coming in. The Today was starting out to be a pretty good day. Yeah. and uh, You got a warning, so you're fine. No, no. It wasn't a warning, but oh. I still got a break is what I said. Oh, oh okay. I want to say thanks to the zit. Oh, you got a real one. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't look like a warning to me. No, it's not. And is I that won't... at the Buzz, Bank, Buzz Burbank Memorial Corner? Yeah, right there. At, right at the middle of the historic drugstore district, right. right where they drop the ball every every New Year's Eve in Manassas. <laughs> right. It right is the, the Times Square of Manassas. To, to be awesome. honest with you, and it's we are being awesome. honest here, where Rob got stopped, well, there are one, two, three, four, five drugstores. And mm-hmm. six, if you, and if you extend the reach a little bit, there's probably six or seven within walking if you distance. Extend, there's, there's five, six, seven, eight. Right. Mm-hmm. Eight within a mile. And, and we're not exaggerating. Eight drugstores. No, Which is why we call it Manassas's Historic drugstore drug district. district. Right. And where you come off of Route 28 mm-hmm. onto Route 234, Precisely. the two main drags, yep. uh, that's that's where you got nailed? Yeah, and I won't... It's where they hang out. I won't say the name of the officer. Where there's a little driving urgency. But he was uh, he was a motorcycle cop, and he perhaps shares oh, the name with America's oh, favorite... I saw him. Yeah, America's favorite flugelhorn top 40 artist. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows that. <laughs> Actually, most people will. Um, really? Yeah. Um, I w- Yanni? Yanni? What's that? Yanni. No, that? That's the pan flute. Oh, 
Flugelhorn. CM. Right? I don't know what yeah, the Flugelhorn is. Sure you do. Really? Yeah, I'll play you the song while I tell you the story. Okay. The thing is, is I made the turn, and I was feeling good, yeah. made good time in. However, because my wife, Careless, I'm sorry, Carrie Speedway. Oh, it's G. G? Kenny G. No, 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 no that's no. the, that's a, that's oh, a, right. I think a, no. a, 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 the officer got it. The officer got it. Oh, I know it is, it's, uh, it's Officer Severinsen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, this officer got a rise out of Rob. Yeah, he did. No, that actually, that is, uh. Oh, Officer Mangione? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Don't know. Okay, all right. <laughs> Could be anything, really. Hey, if he's a motorman, yeah. uh, all bets are off. I'm, I, I support the motorman. You're on his side. Right. Yeah, he was great. <laughs> He must have been circling the block because I saw him pull over someone else. Yeah, really. I think yeah, he was disappointed because you know what? I did. Hey, that's a cold day for a motorman out there. I'm glad he's doing it in the in the snow yeah, flurries. Should go get yeah, warm. Yeah, I'm somewhere. delighted. Hey, calm down, <laughs> Mr. Anti-Authority. What I did is I actually I wasn't aware that he was there, mm -hmm. but I was so proud of myself that I every day I pride myself. I make that stop. Yeah, and I so know do I now. Stop. Now the buzz got uh, you know so the buzz I. fought I the did. law on the law always one. I, I so I always too. make that stop, and I was so pleased, and I made the turn, and because my wife had me blocked in, and right. was still asleep when I left for work, mm -hmm. I took her automobile today. Oh really? So I'm in the Tahoe today. Ah. So you took the Bentley today? I took the yes, I took the Tesla today, Mike. Right. And it's you know it's got that big Chevrolet engine. Ah. It's got a V8. And well, uh, let me say hi to Drew. I want to say hi to Drew, who was talking cars with me the other night. How was our that? Our friend Drew at the uh, at Jimmy's the other night. Uh -huh. Drew, I'm real happy that you're getting a Fisker. <laughs> I thought they made scissors, huh? I thought Fisker made yeah. scissors. No, he's saying he's gonna. He wants to race. Todd Moore and his Tesla. When uh, he get these are two rich guys that we but that we know from yeah, the show. Yeah, that's great. And we want Todd to. He wants Todd to take his Tesla and race Drew's Fisker. <laughs> That'd be great. They're both exciting, I, exciting, expensive that, cars. That is exciting. Hey, Mike, might be later. You and I can get together and compare things we bought at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. See who wins that. Very good. So. Um, I had Carrie's car, and I'm perhaps not as sensitive to the amount of pickup in it, and I was not feeling it. Well, you've got a rocket ship. I do, but you know what? Do you have an eight-cylinder here? Oh, yeah, I've got the Hemi, but I'm more aware of that. I'm used to it. Right. He's not even owning up to the fact that he's driven that car how many hundreds of times. He's not used to that car. P.S. Yeah, that's true. You know what? And this is really, you know, he's right. It was the end of your commute. He's right, and it's pointless because I'm not going to court for it. It was the end of your commute. Yeah, I mean, really, I could almost see. Your, your All right, let's get. Give us so the, what happened? I need give to, us the vitals. What are the vital stats? I need to get into the right lane to take the exit to get to that stop, and I may have accelerated to get ahead of the traffic to merge right. So you're coming up he to the stoplight. Yeah. So you are right, uh, right across from the Bloom, right, and the Right Aid. And I made the and turn. And you're looking at the CVS, and on your right is the Walgreens. Mm -hmm. I am not kidding. It's, it's the truth. Really this true. is a zit. So I pulled. <laughs> a, I pull. I stop. I go forward onto a Route 234, and yes. I hear the sound. Yeah. Uh oh! Yeah, that has to be you. Mr. Yeah. Pelak, pull out of car, please. And I look at it and I see this. You know the point. Mm -hmm. So I pull into the. Uh, was I, it an angry point? Because I've gotten those. No, he was actually. I I can't fault him. He Charming. was really cordial. Worst point I ever got was a Fairfax County motorman. This is back before I knew all the motormen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was a Fairfax County motorman, and I got this one. I got this. One. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of point. <laughs> Gesture, the hammer. Like, really, you could uh, throw a vertebrae. Angry fella. Angry like, point. I think I just did. So I, <laughs> so I went ahead and I pulled in, and he said, uh, license and registration. And I said, I'll have them for you in a moment, officer. Here you are. And he I came up to the car and said, license and registration, please. <laughs> he, did he look like Dean Martin? Maybe a little. Okay, very good. And I did not, I, I wasn't overly forward or, uh -huh. or friendly. I was just very cool and calm. When did the tears begin? Right after I texted you. As a matter of fact, the iPhone has gone bad from the dampness. <laughs> I have my period. And he I said, have my period. And I avoided what I know you're not supposed to do. I didn't say, is there anything wrong, officer? Why did you pull me over, officer? He just said, license registration. I said, here you are. And he said, I pulled you over because you were driving a little quickly. I said, oh, is that what he said? Yeah. See, that's cool. And I said, okay, I'm there. I wasn't aware. I'm sorry. And he came back and he said... Um, Technically, uh, and you know, you, you have to sit it out like ten minutes while yeah. he's doing it. Oh, and he yeah. says, uh, "Technically, you were driving uh, recklessly." I said, "Really?" He says, "Yeah, that's twenty-five up there. I clocked you at forty-six. Ooh, uh -huh. God, he that's said, a, and that is. Can I just say that speed in a twenty-five mile an hour zone? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yeah, it's it's legally reckless, 
But everybody does it yeah, once in a while. I just I needed to get ahead so I could get right. 25 right. is an unrealistically low speed limit for Route 28. Yes, it's it ridiculous. is. ridiculous. And it wasn't. Okay. It's a why trap. You, why don't you calm down a little I'm bit. calm. Why, why don't, don't you calm down? It's, it's a fact. fact. You know it. You I know are, it. You know, everybody you are, Buzz knows Buzz is it. not the policeman's friend. And I wasn't. They're just doing their jobs, Buzz. I, yeah, I know they are. Yeah. And they do everything they do. Hampers what he loves. Don't drive fast. Don't <laughs> smoke pot. But, but don't worry. <laughs> don't it's, rob a bank. Your case will be fairly adjudicated by Judge Scott Farkas. <laughs> so, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. All right. Go ahead, Rob. He comes back. He says, you know, that's 21 over, and that's that's reckless. I did give you a break. I did not write you up for reckless. All right. You got a big speeding ticket. So I, I got a big speeding ticket. You know how much you're going to have to pay? I said, do you know how much this is going to be? He says, uh, I don't know for sure. I think it's... Uh, Three dollars per mile over mm-hmm. the speed and a sixty dollar uh, two hundred. So it'll be yeah. around two hundred. Yeah, I had the same thing, basic, same ticket. Yeah. yeah, I just paid mine bucks. coming through, and, uh, and it's a sixty dollar processing it, fee it was, plus the. It's two hundred and some change. Uh, it's all I got stopped speeding. coming through Emporia, Virginia. Oh boy! On the way back from Florida, and that's when the cars are son, I'll see you all driving. I had the same consideration, and you know what? It's cool. Because reckless, if they want to be a hard ass, yeah. is get yeah, a lawyer no. time. Because yeah, and you, you know have what? to get a lawyer to handle The that. other break I got is he did check the box so I don't have to go to court. I can right. just pay it. Right, right. And I well, said, you know, because you've got a speeding, you don't have to go to court. And anyway. he said... He said it's uh, not a, you didn't get any special favor. He gave you the favor when he knocked it knocked down Knocked it down, down to reckless. reckless but right. I'm saying if it had been reckless... Uh-huh. You would have gone to court. I would have gone to court. Right. But I likely, things. You're talking to the experts. Got the box checked. I said, by the way, I just pay. can I just pay it online? He said, and this was the one moment that I sort of enjoyed. He said, yeah, but you want to give it to the end of the week before you go to pay yes, it true. so it can process. I said, darn, I really wanted to pay it right now. Right. I wanted to pay my traffic ticket today. You know and what? he smiled. He says, <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you are a happy guy, and I'm going to give you your props because you know what? I always give you this hard time about uh, puppy dog tails and everything. And is, ice cream. It, and ice cream and, and fluffy clouds, sky right. blue skies. Uh-huh. You know, the fact is, you know, you're, you're, you're the I same, in, Rob. I would be enraged. Oh, I'd be, yeah. I'd be in a... Remember Not when me. Buzz got his? <laughs> oh, my God. This was like a tampon for yeah. four days. He wanted to move. <laughs> Do you and remember Mike, that? And Mike, yeah, the I, worst four days of the month to be a tampon. And look at this. He's happy joy, He's joy. Well, you know what? I still have my health. I, I'll, I'll tell you honestly. Sort there, of. To this day, there isn't a day that I drive home from this from this job uh, that I'm driving back up 28, headed back toward my house, that I don't say, mm. I hate this town. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I'm that happy, though. Yeah. We're going to take a little commercial <laughs> break. Uh, we'll come back and uh, more fun and more thrills. Coming back, I want to talk about a couple of just icons of sport oh, yeah. that are best buddies, and nothing makes me cry more. <laughs> really? See these two douches get together. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by your Valentine's Day gift headquarters, the Mike O'Mara Show's Amazon page. Next week, it's the big one. Thursday of next week is Valentine's Day, or as the Scotto lady said on the Today Show today, uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, Valentine's? I swear to God she said She's that. She's a moron. <laughs> right now, save up to 75% on select watches, 60% on select jewelry. Hey, that's a good deal. Yeah. And uh, another 20% on uh, both. When you use your Amazon rewards card, you'll find clothing, fragrances, and so much more. When you shop at the Mike O'Mara Show Amazon store, visit and bookmark the Amazon page at MikeOmeraShow.com today, and we thank you in advance for that. We love uh, everybody to use Amazon. This is the next uh, big holiday, and it's right. a great mm-hmm. online holiday, too. The best. Right? Sure you, know, you don't Easy. want to slog Easy out the store after right. the holiday. No. You want to get out Conversation hearts. Anyway, uh, so um, <laughs> we, we did Mark Ronick and the Lost Tapes. We got Rob's uh, corner. I, I want to say uh, get ready for copycats and advertising. I saw mm-hmm. this today. They rank uh, the popularity of commercials. Right. right. And did they use ad meter? This year, this year. I don't think they did it that way, but they. I was watching some of the uh, retrospectives mm-hmm. on the Super Bowl ads, and all I know, the statistic I know, is like one of the most well-regarded spots was the Paul Harvey spot. We talked about yeah, that yeah, yesterday. Right. Jumped out and the least popular spot spot was the bar raffaelli and the uh, nerd go down making again. out and yeah. that and get ready mm-hmm. okay you know what you've done people because you didn't like that because you were grossed out and it shouldn't have been seen by children mm-hmm. you have now cemented the fact that advertising agencies which are the most copycat friendly in the world sure, will Deutsch. no longer attempt edgy that will that's gone 
Edgy is gone. They ruined that, it? Because that was an extremely edgy command. I didn't care about whether it was pornographic or it right. was edgy. Right. right. It made you squirm a exactly. little bit, and I thought it was Ding-ding. fantastic. Yeah. I couldn't take my eyes what off. What if? I mean, let's just, if we're just you know playing the what if game. But now the, 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 the patriotic farmer ad, which I'm, I'm a fan of, it was fine. Yeah, it was but great. now that's all you're going to get. They're and it's going to weaken, to it's gonna weaken the product. Yeah, it's going to diminish it. Do you think it would have worked well if Dodge had an ad where Paul Harvey made out with Bar Raffaele? <laughs> From the grave. That's right. <laughs> but it's just, is today. I saw that today and I went, okay, that's great. America's just gotten like, and, 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 okay, the sappy, heartstring tugging thing. I, I wish I'd known you were going to talk about this because I did not investigate further a headline I saw this morning that said that that Ram ad with Paul Harvey was actually a copy of another client, another advertiser's ad from three years ago. That piece of audio had already been used by an adver. You talk about copycats. This has been the ongoing nature of advertising. But obviously yeah. they had to pay for it, so they paid yes, for it twice. Right, sure, right. But, you know, but so the did. Harvey estate, Paul Harvey's estate, is getting a tremendous amount of money. And that's from, I think, 1978. Yeah. I mean, it's an right. old piece. But it just, it, it, look, and I'm, all, and I'm all for any kind of ad. Mm. What I'm not for is uh, repeat business, and I hope... That they will continue to be cutting edge because when when you see that the heart tugging ads mm. are superseding mm-hmm. the funny oh, Clydesdale that, always I mean, number one. But seriously, mm-hmm. the, the, do you not agree? Advertise. We Buzz and I work with ad, oh, sure. ad people trends, all the time. Right. They will take that and go. Well, okay. Well, maybe funny's not. Mm-hmm. Be careful because that could happen because the right. funny might go out of the Super Bowl ads. You know. And then they talk. Really, overall, we didn't talk about them yesterday. I figured we would wait a day, let everybody else do that yesterday. Sure. But the fact is. My opinion in general of some of the Super Bowl ads were there wasn't anything groundbreakingly innovative. Everyone in, agrees in, in on that. Innovative, rather. Yeah, that's great. Go ahead. So we just uh, recorded with Todd a new episode of Tech for One, and we actually talked about this. Right. But uh, you speak of innovative. I don't think many people have actually seen this story, and I wanted to ask you guys about it, is that the Oreo Cookie Company, they mm-hmm. have their own social media oh, God, they were so uh, fast. team. And right. during the blackout, the 34 minutes of the blackout during the Super Bowl, they were able to whip together a viral ad that they put online that showed an Oreo cookie like, kind of in the dark, and it said, you can still dunk in the dark. And they did that <laughs> instantaneously. Really? That yeah. was the went, most viral tweet of the day. And it right? went viral yeah. oh, within that's great. minutes. That's yeah. new media, yeah. right? And that's right. the way it's working and now. And they didn't have to pay the millions of dollars yeah. for that type of exposure. Well, they they got just got re- on their feet. They got a real value add there to that's the terrific. ads that they did run. But yeah. they, did, they, still had, they still did the one a legitimate out of the bowl, though, with yes. the fight in the library. Yes. So, that, I mean, and the fight in the library, in my opinion, just, even though it was not an original idea, mm. it was not anything spent, but I, it made me laugh yes. out loud. It was good. It was just money me, well spent, is yeah, what it was. Yeah, because I think that the... Uh, I like uh, a little slapstick violence in mm-hmm. my ads. Right. I really do. I like the uh, the tech ad, I think, for Kia, where uh, where he walked up to the robot and mm-hmm. uh, you know the robot kicks the crap out of yeah. him mm-hmm. because he's touching the car. I thought that was a... Because only... And the only thing that made it funny is that when he hits the wall, uh-huh. he hits it with such violence you know, that it, it caves the it's wall. It's a cartoon. Yeah. 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 And, right, uh, right. But I, I like the Oreo ad with the whispering. I thought that was a that mm-hmm. was pretty creative stuff. But what scares me is when they talk about the, the ads that are well-regarded mm-hmm. are up here with the, the heart-tugging ads. Puppies and kitties and yeah, children. And, puppies and, and then you've got the ads that are crap is the uh, bar. Uh, although I do think that bar looked like she was going to vomit do you know after many, she kissed that Do you know guy. how many takes it took to actually like film 45? That? 60. 60, 60. Yep. takes. You know, if I'm that guy, I'm going to go, uh, you're messing it up again. Okay, actually, we'll do it again. The nerd kid was on um, one of the Hollywood shows last night. Not Access Hollywood, but the one that's on, uh, I think, Headline News. Right. Here's him talking about shooting the commercial. It tastes like paradise. <laughs> <laughs> there was about 45 to 65 takes but i i lost count i just enjoyed each one as like it was the first one and we just we just had a fun time making it yeah i'm he sure bar Bailey had a great time she says she did whatever yeah, that she's a liar yeah. he can't help but yeah. look like his mouth would be like but oh yeah <laughs> doesn't he just mm-hmm. i don't think there's enough floss <laughs> Mouthwash. <laughs> yeah. I just look at that guy and I say that that really. Do you think he's a flosser? I don't think. No, so. I don't think no. he is one of the most widely used extras in Hollywood. He's in a lot of stuff. <laughs> really, commercials, movies, mm-hmm. TV shows. Yeah. He got the Rob cheeks too. Yeah. Yes, they, he does. He they the Rob really cheeks. got See, for that. I like him. <laughs> for that he's great. <laughs> he does. He has the Rob, Rob cheeks. cheeks. But it really. I was so. I, that's my warning. Uh, yeah. File yeah. this away. Oh yeah. If you will file this away, and at some point, perhaps uh, it could be as soon as the final four. Uh, 
Uh, let's see if some of the new ads are doing the heart tugging thing. You were saying you that. were saying you and I know this, and we do because when the first few ads started to show up with the sort of anti announcer, the guy who isn't an announcer doing a commercial, then it became a trend, and the next thing you know, everybody was using anti announcers as yes. their announcers, right. and then the, those of us who are our announcers they were unable yeah. to find work. Oh, I, <laughs> I, I, you know, when uh, Kirk hit, hit me to this uh, trainer that right. works with voiceover people, right, right. and it's really hysterical mm-hmm. because all she's about is. She wants to be tackling that. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, it drove you nuts. And I, I quit. I yeah, just said, you I, can't. you know, like you, you're asking me to be what I'm not. I mean, I, I got the, I got radio pipes. I've had radio pipes my right. whole career. That's what I am. I'm an announcer. And everybody wants you to be like, hey, oh yeah, man, I got jobs. I That's why Mike Rowe is very successful because he is exactly. He has kind of the attitude combined, he's a zero. combined with the uh, with the. How thing. dare you, <laughs> regular guy? Sort Mike of Rowe delivering. is a man amongst men. Uh, now, come on. here we hey, go. You know, it'd be great. Here's Oscar another White. one of your your guys you like. Have Mike Rowe over, and and you can watch the Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a fun night. Now, <laughs> I think Mike Rowe is a successful. Uh, Television, unfortunately, uh, Dirty Jobs was canceled, but uh, he he's a, a run. He's yeah. a very good. He's a good narrator, but I don't think he's a particularly great narrator. Oh, I, I, I don't really think. Don't. No, I don't think he's perfect. But he I think, narrates everything. I think know? his show. I think uh, Buzz could do I a think, better job on Deadliest Catch than he does. I think his show. No, I think that he's perfect for Deadliest Catch. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think, think he's quite good. But I once like again, I've heard his narration, and I think Buzz could. Do Buzz, it. Buzz, Buzz has been on a national a Super Bowl ad. Basically, yeah, and I'm, you know? and, I, and yeah. you know, to be honest with you, I think that uh, you know, you just hear he is a very blessed guy. Yeah, because mm. yes. in the world of advertising, this is just my opinion. Once you get there, you break through. Once you break through, you know, there, there are a million guys out there trying to do the same mm. thing. And once you break through, like Mike Rowe did, as far mm. as the narration game. Uh, you know, he's he's the flavor. But you think wants. this, and then you look back at his story and how he actually broke through into the business. How did he break into the he, business? De- uh, Dirty Jobs was a show that he created. He used to do like on network news, right? And he used to when he was in Towson, and he so he said, "I would have like you to- met him? No, I I follow his career because I I'm I'm, I'm just impressed with what he's, he's done on his he's own, right? Right. So people would and he tell- got his parents onto a commercial. Yeah, so people would cool. people would tell him no, this segment's not going to work. They didn't like the show. They would tell he got like ten. 30, 40, 100 doors sh- shut in his face. Right. And he finally he finally pitched the show to the right person. Right. And said, I just want to do a show about pe- of jo- about jobs that people don't want to do. Mm-hmm. But they do it every day and they make a hard living. And it's a, I'm it's, surprised it, it was canceled, to be honest. Yeah, uh, but yeah, and he, you run out of that after They do a, a show about jobs on the Playboy Network. <laughs> so It's a different show. I admire the fact that he's basically in his 40s <laughs> and he finally... <laughs> When he gets into his 40s, he finally breaks through and gets this job. Right. But he'd right. been trying his entire career to get the show it's on a TV. Great story. That's cool. It's a great yeah, story. so you admire that. He deserves yeah, it. Yeah, he deserves yeah. it. I'm just jealous. Yeah, oh, that's what it is. Here we go. Yeah. That's all that's I am. It. I'm just jealous. I'm jealous. Hey, too. you know what? Micro is your Seth MacFarlane. I don't want to tip any hands here. I might be working on a, pro- a project currently where I'm getting that name thrown at me quite a bit. I see. And so th- maybe I'm a little burned on it. Yeah, sure, I understood. You, know, you could uh, be a man it. amongst men. Why can't you be more like <laughs> well, Mike I mean, Rowe? I'm, I'm out there trying every yeah. day. I'm, I'm out there trying Grinding. every day. Uh, you know, always, always trying, yeah. always throwing things right. at that. I told and the I'm, cop that I was Mike Rowe, and it didn't work. <laughs> I get tired of the baseball cap with the, oh, here I am. You know, how about Ford? You and know? you know what? He's how many Fords do you own, Mike? Bro? Zero. And he's skinny. <laughs> and he's so he can get too. bent. All right, uh, before we go to break, I do want to get the uh, I want to get the Super Bowl stuff in yeah. here because uh, I just want to say, uh, speaking of people that Oscar admires, uh, just so I was so emotional to see the wonderful locker room exchange between Ray Lewis and Michael Phelps, and I'm mm. just so glad oh, yeah. that douches can come together <laughs> and commiserate on how horrible their life is and how they have to rise above Did their incredible have athletic ability. Two great American yeah. heroes. He's yeah. the reason I went back to the Olympics again. <laughs> yeah, he he uses. He inspired me. I, you know, uh, look. Michael Phelps, you can't argue with the athletic achievement. Right, you can't argue with Ray Lewis's uh, athletic achievement. Right. So all we got on the other side of that is the type of people they are. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I just, it to me, it just, I don't know. It they, just seemed to me a little, it made me what, what 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 scene? What Was it the video? They were in the locker was room. They were in the locker room afterwards pressing their heads yeah, up yeah, against yeah, each yeah. other. Michael Phelps crying and just yeah. saying, he Ray, was, Ray. Wasn't he expelling, he was exhaling smoke into his face? <laughs> <laughs> I would have it's to look at a, a shotgun. I don't shotgun. Grudge, yeah. I was one of the first yeah. people to say when Michael Phelps got caught from that, that, you know, that hump. I don't. I sometimes remember we're on the radio <laughs> that that circulated the picture of him with the bar. I mean, that right. was completely out of line, mm-hmm. and I thought that was completely unfair to Michael Phelps. Mm-hmm. What I my issue with Michael Phelps is just his kind of duller Duh. attitude. Well, he's an idiot, and and you know, and it just doesn't surprise me that the little boy 
likes Ray Lewis, if, the, the bad boy. That's, if they that's were, who he if likes. If they were only more like Mike Rowe. <laughs> then we have something. <laughs> no, it's just you know there they are you know and and they kind of when they were commiserating you know he's the guy that made me stay with it and I so it, I, look I'm yeah. fine with it I just get back to the whole everybody knows I'm on that Ray Lewis side you know that mm -hmm. that I I some of the stuff he's done I question and uh, I more importantly than that. He always makes it about him. Yeah. So that's really what frustrates me about Ray Lewis. I agree with you. He that's does. the part that I don't like. As, about even, Ray as a Ravens fan, it's annoying. Yes, it's, it's the annoying. sadness of champions. We'll take a break. Come back with more on the Mike O'Mara Show. Do you know what that lyric is? I never knew it. What you doing there in your bed? What you doing in your bed? Yeah. It doesn't. It's impossible doesn't to make it, it out. Yeah. Boy, it's the all hating show today. I was talking about. Uh, I was hating a little bit on Michael Phelps and Ray Lewis. Now I'm hating on the Bee Gees. <laughs> yeah, God, but I in, in the '80s when I had to play this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You had a bad God, PD because this was a record in the '70s. <laughs> was this the '70s? Yeah, late '70s. Whatever. Sorry. <laughs> Well, this, sure was yeah, yeah. this was the start. Yeah, this was the start of the yeah. decline. That's right. right. What you doing in your bed? What you doing in your bed? Little what it really was. Yeah. What you doing in your bed? Yeah. You could. You shouldn't be in bed. You should be dancing. What you doing in your bed, <laughs> Charlie? <laughs> Get up. <laughs> <laughs> you should be dancing. Oscar, what are you doing over there? Eight seasons of Dirty Jobs. Eight seasons of Dirty Jobs. <laughs> Give it up, dude. <laughs> he, like, he likes who he likes. It's, it's over. Yeah. Yeah, Eight no, seasons. He's great. fine. It's he's fine. fine. Uh, getting back to the show, uh, <laughs> this uh, this portion of our program is brought to you by mm -hmm. Warby Parker. Uh, we talk about Warby Parker all the time because uh, they are the best deal out there if you need new glasses. Seriously. Uh, Mark, are those yours? Yeah, I got mine. Uh, Mark, have you uh, selected a frame? I, I think so. Yeah. You know, the only thing that I'm disappointed in myself with is that they're all very very similar. Yeah. Well, that's because like what, you're that's wearing. Your that's, that was what I picked, you know. Right, these are, Rob, I'm sorry I've taken off my glasses. I know you don't like I don't them. like it when you don't wear your glasses. Spooky, it's creep me it? out. Yeah. So, these are getting, you got the it's anus like someone taking off their nose. Right now, yes, I do. I really, I mean, he really looks so much better in his glasses. I can't wait to see the way let he looks see, in these Warby Parker glasses. Those, those, those are good. good. They're a little those smaller, you know, uh -huh. a little smaller than what I very usually good. have. Those, those are very, bad. Yeah, like conservative, though. Now, mm -hmm. uh, let me tell you, Mark's trying these on. Take a look at them. Uh, these yeah. are fashion-forward glasses and sunglasses. And the best part, if you go to WarbyParker.com, glasses start, are you ready for this? At ninety five bucks, no. change back on a hundred. What? Every pair is custom fit Better. using your prescription, complete with anti glare and anti reflection coatings and polycarbonate lenses at no extra cost. They are comfortable and contemporary. Let me see the uh, better those. and quality. I like those, those a lot. Better, right? yeah, yeah. I like those a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can try up to five pairs, which Mark is doing right now. He's going to pick the ones he likes, and then he sends the rest back. And uh, all you have to do is go to WarbyParker.com. You select your five favorites. Mm -hmm. You get even faster free shipping when you use our code. Do it. T M O Yes, Buzz. You were saying the other day what you pay for uh, glasses yeah. in a regular retail store. Typically, pay four to six hundred dollars for a decent pair of eyeglasses. They start at ninety five dollars, people, and they are just as good as anything. In fact, better than a lot of things you'll see out there in the stores, the retail stores. Solid. Try them for five days. Keep your favorites and send the rest back to Warby Parker again with free shipping. We've all done it. You'll find all the details at WarbyParker dot com and use the code T M O S to get fast free shipping. Let me see those. Jesus, Mark, they're all the they're same. All Mark, they're all identical. They're all different, but they are very similar. They're not the same brand, you know, the same style, but they're very similar. It's okay. it looks like he's about to run into a phone booth and change into Superman. <laughs> okay, pick them out. And, Good uh, job, Clark. Send them back, WarbyParker.com. One last thing on the Super Bowl that, uh, and really, I'm not begrudging Baltimore their title. The game happened. Mm -hmm. No sour <laughs> grapes here. happened. If I'm a Niners fan, though, uh, to me, during the game, and I think we all Live saw long, this. D Niners fan, Mike, your whole life. Die yeah. hard. Yeah, right. Exactly. Sure. Uh, but anyway, you bleed the gold. They missed a call that a lot of times the when, hold? You're, when you're watching. No, when you're watching a game, you will get a uh, I call it the anger call where a guy will lose control and do something amazingly stupid. That come in many cases, it's late in the game when tempers are running really right. high, and he will blow the game for his team. Well, Baltimore had a guy do that, and the 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 refs completely pussied out mm -hmm. on it at the very end. And it was the the everybody saw it, and I I remember seeing this and going, he shoved him. And you cannot oh, yeah. shove no. a referee 
in a football game. No, you can't. And uh, if you guys remember the call, I didn't even have to go back and look at it right. to remember the right. call. The call was personal foul on each team. Yeah, I remember. Ty goes moment. to the runner. Yeah, right. offset. Right. And this was a guy that Offsetting took the referee the for Baltimore. I forgot what the name of the player was. The Baltimore Ravens player shoved the referee out of the way. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, that to me is that's the stuff that you know results in the fifteen yard penalty that can change. the Yeah, game. but sure. there was two penalties. If there only it was only one, then yes, there would be a penalty for Baltimore. But was the personal foul uh, shoving the referee? First of all, that's a different deal, right? Because that, that the, the, I think they have different rules for that. It's also hard to play in the dark. You know, things <laughs> but, happen. But they weren't playing the in the dark. The lights were already back on. Yeah, but some say Come because on. they had that 30-minute break, yes. that the 49ers could read. They had that game plan that they could put together when they came back and the game started. That, and their eyes were still adjusting that, that's to true. the light. And could that you is believe, true, but I'm just saying that one play. I don't like hot-headed There was two plays. penalties. There yes. was two penalties. One there of them two... was against another player, and one of them was against the ref. Oh, so both, they actually called Yeah, that. they were both penalties. No, I think one was worse. Yeah, the, the, player, the, the player, he was, uh, his name is Kerry Williams. Right. It's That's a fake, the name. It's you a didn't fake know you were in <laughs> It's not a fake name. I, I, I was shocked that, that the, one of the referees was Mike Rowe, and I think <laughs> the <laughs> reason is... You gotta let it go. <laughs> hey, uh... Uh, why'd you shove me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, just a little thought. A uh, little, little thought. I thought it was uh, the ultimate missed, uh, underreported missed call. Remember when you yelled double or nothing, Oscar, in uh, the bar? Yes. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't I, want I your money. No. Your money's no good here. No, I am it's paying. It's no good here. I am paying. It is no good here. I am paying. No. Look, the bottom line, I'd make you pay, so no, I'm but, paying but, my bet. I owe you 40 bucks. No, you don't owe me money. It was I owe you $40. Funny, that, that last gasp of desperation, the gambler, and you said double or nothing. Why why you, why well, it wasn't a last gasp. It was actually, I mean, Sam. Francisco was coming back, they and were. I wanted to, I wanted to get a taste of yeah. that. What you should do, Mike, is crumble up the money and throw it at him like the Moody's would do. <laughs> oh my God, Bar <laughs> Moody wrote me a personal apology. Oh, oh no, see, hi. how do you feel now? How do you feel? I now? I said thank you. I, I and I and I was like, you could have been a little nicer. He feels, <laughs> oh yeah. God, he feels justice has been served. He, he didn't no, say that no. to her. I, I look. I was shocked that Bar <laughs> Moody. If, if I, I I accepted the apology. You, the waitress if, who was mean to if me. If you're too. not a if you're not a fan of the show, and shame on you. But you should know this is that this woman got belligerently drunk and started throwing food at me. <laughs> and, and I said she was you not know belligerently <laughs> drunk. Huh? That was really not right. That is that's that's a, I'm sticking up. For for the moody. Okay, here, now. let me rephrase it for Oscar. I, and I seldom will do this, but let me try this. If you're not a fan of the show, and shame on you, Barb Moody is a lady who was goaded into throwing food by Mike O'Mara. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she didn't have to write me a personal apology. I right. wrote her that. I said, thank you. This is not necessary. Mm-hmm. God knows I've done ten times worse than I will in my lifetime. Right. And we all were having a great time. Right. So she's no harm, a, no You foul. know what? She was first nice. of all, the type of person that is, mm-hmm. that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, in the so least. calm. And really, you know, uh, we, we look, we have such a close relationship with people that listen to the show. The that family. Occasionally, that occasionally you're going to butt heads with family that yeah. you're going to have, especially in social situations like that and we've got very cool people yeah. we've got no. cool people and i and like i'm gonna barbara say, and charles i said it before that i was cool with hank uh hank Ruder, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm gonna say it again hank mm-hmm. i love you you're, you're a good guy you're such a huge supporter yes. of the show and you, you know you just were very kind to me uh on super bowl sunday and i wanted to say publicly how much i appreciated He's that a good guy you're a very nice person and that was very nice what you said to me personally that day i'm not going to share He's it a with good him, man but, one know, question about the apology. what he said to me was i want to have your that's right. And you, and you said you could have it. Yeah. Reasonable. Get in line, yeah. pal. Question about uh, when you got the note from Barbara Moody, the, yeah. the personal note, did it smell like Chardonnay? No. <laughs> no. But, now, here well, you are defending, and then you pile on. She loves it. Then you pile on. She's what, a what, sweet what, kid, what, good hugger. What an arm on that lady, though. <laughs> when, when are we she gonna, nailed you the first yeah, time. The face. When are we going to stop the hush puppy violence? That's what I want to know. <laughs> right. Hey, uh, speaking of Oscar <laughs> and bets and money, uh, Oscar provided me with a juicer. And uh, I have begun juicing before I uh, I hit my little elliptical stuff in the morning. I thought about this. This is the probably the biggest segment that was lost on that first Friday show. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. the challenge of you staying with the juicer? Well, it is day number four. What was your juice this morning? Uh, what did you squish up and drink this morning? Uh, <laughs> now spoken like a true health nut. <laughs> what did you squish up and drink? Teach me, Mike, because I know you love health. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rob, I've done five days on the uh, thirty-five, forty minutes on the elliptical That's every day. That's it. I, I'm burning 
Five hundred and forty calories. You know, so Rob, Rob lost a hundred pounds. I know he did. I know, and so, uh, but I mean, I, I, you bastard. You know, this, you're yeah, such a. Hunk. I swear to God, you gotta, he is the scab picker. You got to give it to Oscar though, because he. You know, I'm so used to him fighting with his brother. When he gets out of that, he yeah. takes a shot at me. That's that, the that, thing. that threw me off yeah. my equilibrium. He's right. an equal opportunity yes. scab. He is. Yeah. He's a scab he picker. Rob, scab. mad props to you. Ah, yeah, right. <laughs> no big deal. What no. did I squish up and uh, juice? today today squish up and drink uh before the workout or after the workout oh, oh both please yeah, yeah. Both. but start with before yeah yeah nice. like keith morrison yeah uh this morning was uh carrots mm. a beet yuck oh i love beets uh you can have them an apple what kind of apple uh a honey crisp nice of course. Oh, and uh and i think that was it and then afterwards <laughs> and it brie. was and afterwards it was a cucumber mm-hmm. uh why are you laughing it's a at funny, cucumber? It's a funny vegetable. It is. It's one of the funniest. It's, it's all the also one of, It's also one of the best juicing vegetables. Well, yes, it's all I'm water. Sure. That you will have out there. Do you know it's it tastes great. Do you know its closest relative in the fruit and vegetable world is the cantaloupe? Thank you. There you know. Thanks, <laughs> Mr. Science. <laughs> I appreciate that. So Actually, Buzz will you're back You're enjoying your it's experience. True. It is it true. Was, it He's was, right. It was an apple, a cucumber, carrots, and then I had a lot Sounds of... Sounds like a Carnac setup. I had a lot of leafy greens in the refrigerator that uh-huh. I got, organic leafy Your greens. Your DJ name. Leafy green. Hi. How are you? Give me a, let me talk up with a, uh, with a leafy green. You want to do a, a yeah, leafy green Leafy green is a good one. You know? right, hold on. Can you give away Gallagher tickets? You're listening to the Leafy Green Show on WDRC. Yeah, hi. Oh, hold on a second. I, I just found what I needed. It was right. a great show. Here's a clip. WTMT. WT. Oh, God damn it. Just give me no, no. Start it again. And then, what a, that's or, a or crappy clip. jingle. It's a top with hour. The pause. It's a top hour. Or clip yeah. the jingle. You didn't hit me to that, damn it. Okay, do you know that it's going to be a top hour now? <laughs> you know what's great? The juicer gives you more patience. Yeah, more energy. <laughs> I think it's the beat. More energy, you bag. <laughs> Got that tight. Leafy Green with you on a beautiful Tuesday morning. Hope you're out there enjoying it. Wait, we didn't get the snow we were expecting, but that's par for the course. I'd like to send a middle finger up to all the meteorologists in Washington, D.C. Hey, douches, you blew it again. Thank you. Leafy Green Show. You're listening to the Leafy Green Green Show. (laughs) So I think it was Kale. I Ooh. love kale, high in iron. It, kale, leafy green. Sure. Uh, so I put kale in there, and that was my. I had a green post workout uh, drink, and uh, oh, I thought you were talking about something else that happened after the workout. Yeah. Well, that too. <laughs> the beets, I believe, the beets are responsible for quite a cleansing effect. Well, they will the, orange up your urine. Well, yeah, yes, they yeah. Are. That how, too. how are these tasting? Oh, they're fine. I mean, you put an apple. Yeah, they're fine. You put an apple in anything, and, yeah. and you're fine. You put a little ginger in a, oh, yeah. you know, and a Very good sweet for you. ginger brown. Yeah. Uh, you put, <laughs> you put. A little... I love when you do Richard Crenna. <laughs> sweet ginger. That was actually Matt Dillon. No, but he was copying when he goes, Richard. Sweet ginger brown. But he was copying Richard Crenna. That's from a fabulous film. From 40 years ago. <laughs> the Flamingo Kid. I well, recommend everybody Welcome to the it. El Flamingo, Jeffrey. Don't pee in the pool, Jeffrey. Uh, so my point is yes. that uh, so far, because I have mastered cleaning that thing immediately mm-hmm. so well. Yes. That it should I am just so, mostly rinse, right? And really, for me, this is the lazy factor. For me, in the morning, as opposed to frying an egg or mm-hmm. putting a protein in my system or getting some yogurt... I find, you know, getting this uh, juicing thing is, you know, I'm enjoying it. And does it stay with you? Does it satisfy your hunger? It yeah. gives you energy? Stays yeah, with absolutely. You? I cool. still want to, you know, you want to have a, like, a lunchtime. I like to have a normal. Can you adjust the something. amount of, like, fiber from the fruit that makes it into the juice, or is it just pure juice? I have no idea. Don't ask me questions. That's a fun fiber. machine. There's though. fiber in it. Yeah, What's that? It's a fun machine. It's a fun machine, and the fact is, uh, you know, Oscar... Loaned it to me, although I thought he gave it to me. And, you weren't uh, listening. And the fa- he You're said storing it for listening. him. But I will pay you that $40. No, and, yeah, I don't want And then I'm going to buy the juicer off you. I'm, I'm so, so, I'm so yes, glad. Yes, I'm going to buy the juicer you off of you. You have to talk to the young lady in my life. Okay, she wants it's, it back. It's hers. Todd. And I know what you said to her. I know you said to her. I know. Hey, he won't He won't use it. Two right? weeks, Tom. He won't, he won't use it. Talk Shannon. to me. No, Oscar exaggerates even more, so it would be less than two weeks. What I no, I said two weeks. Yeah, but to her, you said he'll use it for an hour. No, no. He'll use it for an hour and he'll get dust. He'll no, be a coat rack. He'll ju- be a coat rack. Juicing, he's so fat and lazy. He'll do that. He's not tight like me. Juicing is work. <laughs> what? It's too much work. See, for me. I 
the work part is, you in like my that. opinion, no, the work part is schlepping to the grocery store. Right. But uh, we did a marathon. Dude, what's her name to do it? Uh, it hey, what's her <laughs> name? <laughs> oh, 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 wow. Hi. <laughs> That's Such Rob's dork. future. I meant the, for clean, the week. I meant the cleaning lady. The cleaning, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the cleaning lady that I have every day. That's her. <laughs> yeah, right. Lupe. <laughs> Once every three months. <laughs> so you like the ritual of it. You like the process of making it's, these juices. No, I, I don't find it inconvenient. Okay. I think that's the not way I would. How long is not a hassle, hassle for me? How long before you make like a, a juice that is made of lime and <laughs> and vodka? I, oh, I put two lemons in the morning juice. Mm -hmm. yeah, it okay. was it was beet. Isn't that on carrot, Fox News? Two lemons and an apple. The morning juice. And the morning juice. <laughs> No, that's Mark's channel. Yeah. Oh, With Jews. Salt morning Jews. The Jews are. But I like it. I really, I mean, I cool. really, really like it. And I this, you've come it. a long way because, as we mentioned in the Lost Show, uh, the last time you juiced was at WJFK and I had to clean it for you. <laughs> but you, the only thing, <laughs> I and you know it. this, have you made juice with that machine? Uh, I've been there while it's being made. So you've never even Witnessed participated. It. I don't do that type of work. Well, I mean, but you, mm -hmm. so why? Mm -hmm. But I would think, Mr. Health, that you would be kind I'll of. I'll drink that. it. But right. I won't. I won't. It's not, because not the the do. little cone that's in that thing, yeah. you know, with the screen, yeah. mm -hmm. Irving that's, cone. That's a pain in the ass. Dexter yeah. would uh, would be mad if he had to use that thing. <laughs> that is a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. But, but if you if you right away take and I saw I seen this cone. Yes. I seen it. If you take it over to the uh, sink right after uh -huh. and rinse, it should just about rinse clean. No, it does not. You really? Scrub you it with that to, little you brush. have to scrub it. It gets the because the, the because the fibers are so fine. That sucks. You have to you have to scrub it. You know what? Some fiber gets into the juice. Yeah, sure. You should get a you should get a better juicer it's a good juicer. That's the best juicer available on the market it's that's not exactly accurate. No? no there are more there there are better ones out there mike rowe makes a wonderful juicer it's better than the one you bought initially yes it is better Thank than you. the one it is better than the one i bought initially. Ooh, i did you a yeah. favor yeah i know you did I, yeah. and i'm Enjoy. grateful see and, you in eight days so here's the yeah uh, are we done eight and when, <laughs> and when the eight days are over what is the game plan what is i mean what is your i told you you can use it up till summer you can either mike you oh can, so summertime yeah you can right. either keep the juicer or fire oscar <laughs> <laughs> heavy, heavy lies the crown I, what, what decisions, I will do, decisions. Heavy lies the head. I will. What I will do. Not the crown. Crown is what I drink. I will right. use it till summer, and mm -hmm. then like the two weeks before I give it back, mm -hmm. I'll just use it and never just clean abuse it. it. <laughs> Say, what is, what's for dinner? Hot dog juice. No, if you're still using it, we'll all chip in. Maybe we'll get it for you for a birthday present. Oh, oh that's, that's a sweet. great idea. Your yeah. birthday. You know what? I'll take that year, deal. Right? I will take mm -hmm. that deal. Well, the juicer. You guys buy me a juicer if I if I am uh, if I'm still actively juicing. juicing. Yes, yeah. I tell you what. They chip in and buy juice. A juicer, I'll buy you kale. kale. The, the juicer, organic kale. The oh, yeah. juicer is one step away from the snowblower. Mm. Hey, well, could now you wait make a snow minute. juice. Now hold on, just a that's second. Not, there. That's, it doesn't work. Hold on, hold on, Mister Man. <laughs> Neither of them are going to be used meant much, you know. I, I, first it, of all, it used has to snow. I have juiced. You know, I love when Oscar comes out with something so feeble that he starts fading before he stops saying. Do <laughs> you know what he said? Neither one of them is going to be used. The oh, juicer. I, I, I wait, wait, wait. The juicer. I said four days. Do yes. you know how many times I've used it? How, how many, many times? Ten. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that. And four days. And that's I've why, used it constantly. Well, that's why it's taxing. Yes. Yeah. Why is it taxing? It's not taxing. It's so much work well, for it's a so little expense. reward. Did Shannon, how many times did Shannon use it? She uses it during the summer because she likes it. Did, it. did she use it a lot? Yeah, but she's got the time. You're a busy man. You're a celebrity. I'm not a busy man. Will the juicer be coming? 90 minute show every Will day. the juicer be coming to Florida? To huh? Will the juicer be coming to Florida? One. Hundred wow. percent. And will you oh, make because, because will you make juice for all of us? I will because first of all, I'm going to make orange juice for everybody down there. Oh, oh love where it. will you? Although, should although, we bring oranges with us? Although the orange mm -hmm. that no. type, it's not meant to be that type of juicer. Really, it's not a citrus juicer. No, but I, I it's a you, vegetable juicer. And you can get fresh orange juice down there, yeah. like in the store. That's a, yeah. that's fantastic for a nickel a gallon. So that's that the, machine is a vegetable juicer. It's not a citrus juicer. Well, but you can you, you can juice do citrus. It's not the same. Oranges and apples are part of the recipe. Well, it's like comparing apples and oranges. It's very different. Jesus, you're, you know humps. I, all I, the only point, the only point that I wanted, the point I wanted to make uh -huh. is so far, I'm really enjoying it. Uh -huh. I've, I've juiced twice today already, and I feel fantastic. Excellent. <laughs> now nobody has anything to yeah, say. I thought you were going to fall. No, but that's... you're just as grumpy as you were yesterday. No, I'm not just as grumpy, <laughs> God damn it. Hump. You're just as grumpy. Last point I wanted to make. Have you tried raspberries get... in it? Shut up, Rob. So. <laughs> Getting back to this, uh, reporting. 
Yes. Yes. So the kid, thank God, the five-year-old yes. boy, which initially was reported as a six-year-old boy because no one does journalism in this country. Well, they didn't any, expect him to be out before his birthday. I it five. It's, it's a, you added a five. Did, right? yes. Good. But you're not a journalist. You're not, exactly. You're not, you're I'm not, proud of it. You're, you're, you're a news reporter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're a true. news broadcaster. That's true. You are not somebody, I have been a reporter, but currently yeah, I just... You, 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 yeah. you, you anchor the news. Right. That's what you do. But the people that are on the scene out there, mm-hmm. I'm watching this, and no one... Mm-hmm. It's like we haven't gotten an update as to exactly how the man was killed. All I wanted to know, I said, did the guy off himself or did the SWAT team go and put one in his head? The police and don't I, say. No, but the right. fact that they, there's got to the be a way point. to find out. No one does it anymore. Right. They said we haven't gotten an update. The police won't say. That's what they do. And Buzz, you remember from back in the day, yeah. you asked but 50 I'm, people and tried I, to get a scoop. Look, I'm not defending them because I have no dog in this fight. I, I'm not defending them. But the fact of the matter is the police refused to tell the reporters. The reporters were kept well back from it. We don't know. The reporters have reported they heard two loud booms or bangs yesterday. Yeah, I know, but the police listen, have not I know, revealed. First of all, I know everything they've said right. because they're all saying, like you just did, right. the exact same pablum that comes out. The fact is you're not always going to. With great reporting in history, right. whether it's newspaper, radio, or television, you don't always rely no. on the press conference. They do now. And also... you got all these reporters, all these TV right. trucks, and here's my question. You're all down there, what, to broadcast the same press conference? That's it. It's gone. Nobody reports anymore. Nobody asks difficult questions. I think... That I'd like to know, and they know. Mm. You better damn well believe the police know what's oh, going yes, on. Oh, yes, they do. So let's dig a little bit. That's my thing. Ask a cop. Find somebody you know. Send a report. Mm. Dig. That's what Be journalism is all about. Be responsible, but report. And am I the yeah. only one that's going Get crazy that they haven't told us how they got a camera down there? But here's the thing. They said, uh, we don't know whether he was killed by the bullet or the concussion. And then they show a graphic of a kid, the kid two feet away from him. Well, if the concussion killed the guy, yeah. what about the kid? Yeah. Exactly. You idiots. So, I mean, and, and really, just the, the lack of, but they all want to go with the heart string. And they want to go with that. They, yeah. they don't want to do a Budweiser ad. And I'm sitting here, maybe because I got a degree in broadcast journalism, I'm curious about you the real know. story. Sure. Yeah, we all are. Because yeah. there's a huge story. I'd like to know... Were they able to, uh, you know, use technology to off the guy? Because that's pretty amazing that they True. went down into a bunker, were able to shoot the guy. But we don't know that yet, and that's what frustrates yeah, me. Yeah, I agree. That's all. Thought no more. We'll take a break. Come back with Rob's Magic Audio Vault right after this. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Yes, I'm Do you think Santana. Arnold Schwarzenegger was involved in that rescue? <laughs> the Terminator? <laughs> <laughs> all right. There we go. I... Uh, you know, getting back to that, and uh, let me just uh, say our show yes, is brought to you by Sherry's Berries. Mm. Uh, you know what's sexy, people? Big juicy strawberries, drenched in chocolate. Juicy. Sherry's juicy, berries. Juicy what? Strawberries. Of course. Sherry's berries are the sexiest berries ever. You know what? Yeah, you can call them sexy. I call them just amazing. They're the best. And I don't. I, I'll be honest with you. This commercial wants me to talk about how sexy the berries are. Yes. I don't necessarily look particularly sexy when I have. Juice dripping down my I chin, disagree. onto yeah. my stomach, and flecks of chocolate because I've bitten into the whole berry when I should just mm. nibble at it. I, I think, am a beholder. I think I love juice on your chin all the time. Well, the whether fact it is, be strawberry or kale. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> but the berries are as, as big as your head. Yes. <laughs> Prices start. <laughs> Actual size may vary. <laughs> <laughs> the berries start at just nineteen ninety nine. Mike, you have a. A bit of beet juice. <laughs> okay, shut up. On your chin. You can double your berries for just $10 more. This is the best deal out there. I love this. Do this. 40% you can save when you uh, use the code TMOS at uh, either 866-FRUIT-0 or just go to berries.com. We've talked about them. Anybody uh, that's ever gotten Sherry's Berries, and lots of our listeners have, they say that uh, they're the best of their kind. They, they really are. are. They are. You see these, like, you go to a grocery store and see these little things that they offer as chocolate covered berries, like at a Whole Foods or something like that. You go it's to Berries. Nothing compared to this. Oh, my God. Yeah. They're incredible. And, and it's true. Women think that chocolate covered berries are sexy. Very they good. Just do. That's berries.com. Click that mic, enter the code TMOS, and uh, it is a limited time offer, so get on it now. Sherry's Berries at berries.com. Com. All right, uh, getting back to what were you talking about? We were talking about the uh, the shooting and mm-hmm. uh, and digging in. We'll get Rob's audio vault on in, in a second here. You know, the fact is, I just want to know. Uh, well, sure. Yeah, I, we, all yeah, we all do. We all do. I agree. You know, and, uh, you know it, when I heard that today, they're not sure whether, you know, you get a report of this up there going, 
They're not sure whether it was a gunshot self-inflicted or perhaps the concussion from the blast while I'm looking at a picture of the guy that is two feet away from the child. Yeah. What and I it heard, just went, and it's just duh, the land of duh. What, they, and they get away with it. But I had heard that. yesterday from Bob Schieffer, and he had uh, he had somebody that said that they... CBS like a, had a report. Basically a source, right. yeah. Uh, and they said that the, they were dropping off deliveries. They had a schedule mm -hmm. of deliveries they were mm -hmm. dropping off to the, the gentleman that was holding the kid hostage. That's how they got the camera. And, they, oh, it is? and that's when it all went down. But I I had the same question when the reporter was done. I said, "How did it happen?" Yeah, and and it's just and it's not necessarily that they had to have the information. There was not even they're so wrapped tight about not making mistakes that they don't even ask the questions or they don't even frame the story correctly. Right. I, I, it's 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 been a trend that I've seen over the last few years, and it, we're just getting horrible, horrible reporting out there, Buzz. That's my point. Yeah. You're getting people that just love. They get spoon fed. Everything, they, they, and that's what they, there's a lot is. of truth in what you're saying. I just think this is one of those situations where, in the initial hours, the initial day of of this situation, what's going to be a week, the, a month? The police have the information clamped down. The coroner has the information clamped down, and reporters could ask, and probably are that we don't know about, asking until they're blue in the face and not getting answers. Now, you're right. There are ways. There are back channels. Uh, nobody's found that or broken through that yet. We'll know very soon. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thanks. That makes me feel better. Uh, let's open up open the, the thing. Uh, let's open up the thing. For today. The audio vault for Tuesday, February fifth, twenty thirteen. We lost my second favorite Presley yesterday, Mike. Nineteen sixty six. Lead singer on really a key record in the rock and roll yep. movement. With this is this was a big one because it was garage rock at its most purest. Great, like great song. Great song. Reg Presley, lead singer of the Trogs, passed yesterday. Cancer got him. They no had, relation, right? No, not at all. British guy. And they kind had, of frustrating to have that name and be in the God, music I would think so. Yeah. I would think so. Um, they had a couple other great records, and I, my favorite is a, more of a ballad that R.E.M. covered. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what is it? A field of my fingers, field of my toes. Love is all around. Ah, yes. And it's a great, great band for what they were, and a safe home, because it's sad when one of the pioneers dies. Yeah. No record before this sounded like this. I Reg love this Presley. Oh. And uh, a sidelight, I sang this in Battle of the Bands Ooh, in high school. Man. Really? Yeah, I fronted the teacher's band because none of them knew the lyrics. <laughs> Wild thing. Wild thing. I Major think I League. Major yeah, League. As a matter of fact, and that was Charlie covered Shane. by a band called X. And this is their version. This is the one played in the movie uh, Major, Major League. League. Right. Dang. You make my heart sing. That movie holds up. Yeah, it that, does hold up. Yeah. Big yeah, Daddy loved that movie. One of the all-time great characters, uh, you know, Charlie Sheen. At the time, you know, Charlie Sheen wasn't the maniac that he is right. now. And it was such a perfect use of him yeah. in that movie. I, I laughed my ass off. With the haircut? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, my God. And the God. glasses? Laugh out loud funny. I stand by my prediction that uh, we will have a President Christie in the White House in 2016 based on his appearance on Letterman last you night. You only love him because he's fat. And you love him for the same reason. <laughs> it was so great to watch him try to fit into that chair. I have to oh, beg. Oh, he I, was I, fatter than I've ever whoa. seen him yeah, last night. Yeah, he's got whoa. a lot, babe. May I, may I beg to differ? I, I like him for the reasons that everybody else likes right, him. I like too. him for my politics, that he he really showed what, what bipartisan is all about. He did now, a did great it job benefit with my guy? Yeah, probably did. Uh, but at the same time, I think bipartisan is just a cool thing to be. But mm -hmm. he came out, he really, he handled himself well last night, despite <laughs> the funny. fact that he couldn't fit in the chair. He did it two different he parts was, in the interview. He, he's gotten... Bigger. bigger, much bigger. Two, I don't think he could fit in that that uh, pullover anymore. That's wow. fleece. It's amazing. At two different parts of the interview, he pulled out donuts from his pocket and began uh, to eat them, which <laughs> was fantastic. Odd. Absolutely <laughs> fracturingly funny, and you know, owning the narrative. Yeah, right. smart. Guy. But you know what they did? You know, they did basically uh, three segments. One was a, a sillier segment. The closing was a sillier segment. But the middle was meaty, uh -huh. and it was strong uh, content. And he really is. He's a pretty great guy. For Let that. me ask you this. Yeah, you've said it. Your yeah. prediction. That he will lose weight and he will run for president in yes. 2016. I can guarantee you he'll run for president. I don't know that he's going to lose weight. <laughs> well, how many people you do you think have come up? How many people have come up to him? I mean, I almost think he's ballooning right now because he knows the whole the game plan. Stress. He's got to have. Well, you know what? No, my, no, no. My point no. is, Buzz. I, I'm thinking more of a conspiracy, at right? least, even though it's not the right use of the word. That he is probably being told by, dude. If you if you become the story that look at Chris Christie uh -huh. and it happens like by 2014, yeah. Oh my God, look what he took off. It's and, gonna happen. And then and then he's gonna be like 
Bullet he's proof. gonna be the guy. Unstoppable. I totally so agree with you. Know he's got like a gastro surgery already. No, he won't, he won't do that. I don't that. know how he, he does it. He won't do that. He'll he'll do he should do weight not. But uh, he'll do somehow he will lose slowly, healthfully, gradually mm. the weight over the next couple years. If he and, does and by the time he announces his candidacy, he could be a very he's gonna candidate. be unstoppable. I, I think right. he'll probably run, I think he'll probably win. I don't he might walk. I don't think he'll lose the weight. When uh, eaters are compelled to quit eating so much or smokers are compelled to quit smoking. It, it, that panic sets in just before you take the action that makes you eat or smoke even more. That may be why he's putting on weight here. I'm not sure. I don't think we have any guarantees that he'll succeed on well, losing weight. Uh, I think he's very popular. I get it. I agree with it. Right. Uh, I, but I think his policies will come into question as well. You're so and, wrong. And that's where that'll fall. And apart. you know what? Look, you're at, so wrong again look today. At, <laughs> I have to tell you that. You know, I, I, I look know at about, our look at the stupidity of our nation. Right. The last thing that's going to hurt him is policy because no one's going to care. No, but they're going to be into the wait, fact wait, wait, that he lost. Let me weight. answer what Could Buzz be. is saying. What, what Buzz is saying is that you know the pressure and uh, you know coming up to the mm. the election will cause him to eat. No, no, the the it's all about whatever it is. Mm. It's about motivation. I have lost weight on air mm -hmm. uh, with with that as a motivation. I think the motivation will be greater than the stress that makes him want to eat. We will see. Right. You know, if he chooses right. to do it. Right. Uh, you know, but but if he, you know, if I think if I'm an advisor to Christie, I'm going, oh my god, dude. You know how big you would be if you were able to drive. If you were smaller. If you were smaller. <laughs> Absolutely. See, he's gaining now. Though. What the yeah. thing is, is I think he made five huge steps towards his goal on Letterman last night. He showed that he had a sense of humor about mm -hmm. it. He talked about it. And he looked politically savvy. It was a great but appearance. But he will not be a viable candidate. Uh, and, and this is coming from a fat guy. If he's that, he if he's that size, he's he that can't big. Be. He will not be a viable candidate. Be. People will be worried about his, you know, health. his health. Well, mm -hmm. we're looking at the clock here. I, I have to hold off and play you this guy tomorrow, but I just want to tease you with this clip. Smash! 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 It involves a hatchet. I'll tell you that. We'll have it for you tomorrow, but I do want to close with Letterman. Uh, this is Chris Christie on Letterman last night. His advice to David Letterman and uh, all the jokes that Dave has done through the years. Okay. All kidding aside, is it an issue or is it not an issue? And you tell me how you oh, see things. Well, I, I only care if you're funny. I mean, it, it, from my perspective, if the joke is funny, I laugh, mm -hmm. even if it's about me. Mm -hmm. If it's not funny, I don't laugh. Um, but I've never felt like it was, you know, anything that really bugged me all that much. No. Now, now, what percentage of mm -hmm. the jokes have you found funny? Yeah. About forty percent. <laughs> roughly. Yeah, roughly. Would, I like it. in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. yeah. I, I say keep, I like that he's quick. Keep, keep, your, eye, keep yep. your eye on him. I really like that guy. That's and, cool stuff. And uh, not much content. More tomorrow. That's your magic audio vault, Mike. We'll take a break. Come back with buzz and news right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. We are running late, so let's get right to it. Here he is, the man who has disagreed with me all day today. No, he hasn't. Ladies, <laughs> here's Buzz Burbank in the news. All right, you humps. We're brought to you today by <laughs> Quench for Knowledge. Yay! Join Rob Spiewak, Mark Ronick, and their lovely assistant, Diana Ash, Thursday, February 7th at Quench in Rockville, Maryland. That's this week. It's America's favorite trivia game, Quench for Knowledge. It's fun and it's free. You can enjoy the signature cocktails and the great food that make Quench your best destination anytime. Five big ways to win big, and guess what I found out? <laughs> What's that? Marcus Serta is going to be there, but come out anyway. Oh, he's going to come by the show this week, Yeah, too. that's right. Our uh, good friend Marcus, yes. Come by, and he's... Uh, do you have the duct tape ready? I do. <laughs> All right, very good. Thank you. <laughs> Bring Just your need about friends. This much. What day is he coming in? I believe it's the 8th. The 8th. What day is that? I think that's Friday. 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 Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Yes. Double check on that for me, sure. Mark. That would be okay if he's on a show if we don't record it that Friday. Uh, yes. That is This Week in America. Right. No. Right. No, that's... No. Uh, America. I think it's called The that's Horde. Right. Isn't that's it called right. The Horde? The Horde. Yeah, tech, probably The Horde. It's Tech, tech 452. It's Tech O'Mara. Yeah. <laughs> Big O and Dukes. Bring, Americast. Bring your friends <laughs> Mark and Lowell. this Thursday night. <laughs> I was waiting. Quench for Knowledge starts at 8.30 p.m. Thursday, February 7th. Uh, that's at 9712 Treville Gateway Drive in Rockville. To find out more, visit quenchnation.com. Very good. Team trivia, come alone or come as a group. Ah, wonderful. Yeah, let's uh, pack the joint for these guys. Love uh, it. Of course, today's top story is the freeing of that little boy held hostage in Alabama, but we'll get back to that. We want to begin instead with what the government has decided it can do namely, target its own citizens with drone strikes. NBC News got hold of a confidential 16-page memo that says the U.S. can use drone strikes to take out its own citizens 
despite a law that bans such assassinations. The memo says a drone strike on a citizen is legal if that citizen has recently taken or is about to take part in a violent attack. But civil liberties experts say the memo is just vague enough to give the government flexibility in this policy that they describe as chilling. Now, here's why we led with that story. That's very scary. That's very scary. A drone circled over that bunker in Alabama where a man who didn't trust the government was holding hostage a five-year-old boy named Ethan. The unmanned aircraft was used for surveillance and did not deploy any weapons. Now, police say they proactively decided to end the standoff after seven days because they say 65-year-old survivalist Jimmy Lee Dykes had grown agitated. Police began to worry about what he might do next, so they stormed the bunker, killed Dykes, and rescued Ethan. We had the same concerns with Uncle Dave. At Jimmy's. He was becoming <laughs> agitated, and He's, no one knew what was going he, to happen next. He gets curmudgeon late in the day, he doesn't really he? Does. he? Well, he didn't. I don't think have, we gave have, a lot of respect to have, his football you, pool. Have you seen a picture of Jimmy Lee Dykes? It looks like Uncle Dave. Yeah, it kind of looks like Uncle Dave. Yeah, a little disturbing. Was he upset so. about that, Uncle Dave? I, we think were... he's, I think he's got a very thick skin. I think we're fine. <laughs> okay, good. But your impression of him was great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, he's agitated. <laughs> so young Ethan is in a hospital resting and getting checked out. He's said to be in normal, happy, five-year-old spirits. He'll be back with his family for his sixth birthday later this week. Great birthday for that family. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. The school bus driver who was shot to death by Dykes as the driver tried to prevent the hostage taking is being remembered of course as a hero uh, and what i was saying before and the reason i'm frustrated i am just incredibly curious sure, we about are. the technology that was used when mm-hmm. i picture that ladder and going down to that bunker mm-hmm. i'd really like to know how do they get this guy? how do you I'm sneak up you. on an underground bunker right it, it was a terminator it was like a special uh, i want to i want to believe that somehow some way just like in the osama bin laden Raid of uh, the Taliban's uh, structure for Osama bin Laden. No, you mean the, uh, the, the his his place in Pakistan? Yeah, just like that really helicopter not. that we didn't know existed. Right. That the military came out and said, "Look, I know you got a situation. Want to try something out?" Here. Because Leon mm. Panetta did get involved in this. Yes. That he authorized military hardware to be used it, in this rescue. What like, if like it was drone. a robot like a Terminator? <laughs> Now, what I heard... Maybe, you know what? Maybe that's why I, all of the, the cone of silence... It's a hush-hush. Yeah. What I heard it was is... not you, a transformer. No, you, you know that little pipe Tell that they you. talked to him through? Yeah. I heard Matt Bloom jump down that pipe. <laughs> and... <laughs> slid. No, no, he never touched the walls. <laughs> he just jumped... He parachuted it. He and Zoolander. <laughs> Yeah. Side by side. He's very thin, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the uh, the other the other killing in the news this week is that of a retired Navy SEAL who worked to help fellow former soldiers deal with their post traumatic stress syndrome. But maybe Chris Kyle shouldn't have taken those men to a shooting range. He certainly shouldn't have taken Eddie Ray Routh to that range, especially after Routh threatened to kill his family and himself. Routh is now charged with killing the man who was trying to help him cope. At that gun range. The latest uh, guns at school incident, two schools were locked down just outside of Tulsa yesterday after a student at one of the schools shot himself to death in a restroom. Now, the president took his anti-gun violence campaign to Minneapolis yesterday. That's a city that turned around its violent reputation with a whole range of programs. Quoting the president, we don't have to agree on everything to agree that it's time to do something. Absolutely. And uh, just do, you know, listen, uh, you have to accept the reality of the gun culture in this country. Most you do. do. You yeah. have to. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, let's do all we can. And that's all we can ask of mm-hmm. our leaders right now. Instead of being cynical, I've changed my whole attitude. I'm going to still bitch about the, the mm-hmm. gun nuts that uh, contact me on Facebook and other places like right. that. But overall, all I want to do is do what we can with the culture what, that we yeah. have. The question, the key question is, what can we all get together on? Let's start with that and yeah. at least do something. Absolutely. Uh, the government's suing Standard & Poor's for $1 billion over the S&P's pushing of junk bonds just before that 2008 financial crisis. Wow. This is good news because it paves the way for investors to sue the S&P as well. And congratulations to Washington, D.C. for surpassing now, for surpassing Los Angeles for the worst traffic congestion in the nation. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Mark, I know you're thrilled. Oscar, (laughs) Buzz, Rob, I know you guys are all thrilled, and I just want to say uh, my living room is always open. All I know is that there's not so many cars out there that you can't exceed the speed limit. (laughs) (laughs) You know, uh, it it is truly amazing. I have, uh, you know, been out and about the last few days. Have you guys noticed it's more aggressive than it's ever been? Oh, yeah, God. It it gets worse every day. I mean, there are, are, it's just so crazy around here, and uh, let's build more houses. Yeah, absolutely. And it's 
not the more roads. Out. Right, exactly. Can uh, we build the houses on the medians? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Maybe we should. That, that'll, shh, that'll probably happen. The report that bestows this honor upon D.C. also says that Americans lost $121 billion in time and fuel last year just sitting in traffic. Mm-hmm. Uh, finally, in Washington State, the committee that decides these things in Washington State has decided to let Tony Cava keep his personalized license plate, which reads, goes to 11. I can keep it. It's a great... It's a reference, of course, to the movie This is Spinal Tap, in which a character explains that his band's amps have volume controls that go to 11 instead of the usual 10. Sadly, not everyone saw that movie. The license plate board found itself considering a complaint from a citizen who wrote, I find it in poor taste that the great state of Washington would issue a plate that allows a driver to insinuate that his penis grows to 11 inches in length. The rest (laughs) of the citizens should not be subjected to this vulgarity. Wow. We assume he's not referring to the vulgarity of ignorance. There you go. I'm Buzz Burbank on the Mike O'Mara Show. Buzz Burbank's new book will be entitled The Vulgarity of Ignorance. You know, my mom had trouble getting a license plate through. Really? Because uh, Julia couldn't say Sharon when she was little and called her Shay Show. Shay Show. And she was denied the word Shay Show because they thought it was Shay's Ho. Oh, really? God. Yeah. She finally got it when they put a, a, a space. space. So yeah. it was Shay Show. But she really had to go and like plead her case. That's Shay's Ho. That's Shay's Ho, my mama. Shay's Ho don't play that way. <laughs> Thank you, boys. Our show today was brought to you by Pro Flowers. The best. She'll be impressed, you know, when you turn to Pro Flowers for Valentine's Day. 100 blooms. That's a lot of flowers, yeah. a lot of colors. Uh, and now it's 50% off at proflowers.com. And for another $10, they throw in a spa kit and gourmet chocolates. Mm. Use the code TMOS to get these fantastic gifts. We would appreciate that. And uh, you do it too. Proflowers.com. Remember our code TMOS. That's it. We got to get out of here, everybody. We'll be back with another brand new show tomorrow. So long. Bye. 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 Smash, smash, smash.